Good to go. Okay, so we're going to talk ar around the, the herbicide portfolio and the new decision tree that we've put together this year. All of this is in the usual maize brochure which, where you can see the table of, of products and what they do and what the active ingredients are and then there's the weed table on the back but the whole point is how do we put all this together to help people choose uh, the right mixtures and the right sequences. So what we've put together is a, a flow chart, a decision tree to try and help people. And the first question to be asked is do we need a pre-emergence herbicide? And the areas where we're suggesting that that's considered is if you've got a high weed population, you know, weedy fields or anticipating a lot of weeds, uh, if you're in an early drilling situation where there's going to be more time for weeds to germinate and grow and compete with the crop, and then if you're targeting black grass or other grass weeds that are difficult to control. And the whole point of the pre-emergence is to take the burden off the post-emergence, recognising that we need to have weed control done by about the full true leaf stage of the crop. So if we can answer yes to any of those questions, then that takes us down the pre-emergence route and our choice would be to start with dual gold uh, as the base. That will have activity on grass weeds and some broadleaf weeds. It doesn't do everything by any means. There are gaps, polygnums, fat hen, etc., where, which can need plugging. And we can do that pre-emergence if we wish to broaden the spectrum by adding in uh, pendimethylin um, using a litre to 1.4 litres of dual gold with between 800 and 1200 grams of pendimethylin. That will broaden the spectrum of the pre-em if we want to go down that route. The next question is about post-emergence. Uh, and just to remind people that again we're trying to have the job done by the full true leaf stage. So this flow chart applies whether or not you've done a pre-emergence because you assess what targets you have left either having done a pre-em or not. Hope for the pre-emergence has reduced the weed burden so we can tailor the post-emergence accordingly. Again the first question we're going to ask is do we need to control grass weeds, specifically blackgrass, ryegrass, barnyard grass, those sort of weeds. If the answer is yes to that then the starting point is Milagro. That's going to give us our basis for grass weed control with a few broadleaf weeds such as cleavers uh, on top of that. If we've just got the grass weeds to deal with, then that may be as far as we need to go. However, we're more likely to want to broaden the spectrum to pull in other weeds. And if we're looking for a complete spectrum, including difficult weeds like speedwells, polygnums and mayweed, then that will push us down the route of Calaris plus Milagro. That's going to give us the broadest spectrum of grass and broadleaf weeds. So a litre of Calaris with 0.125 of Milagro. If we just need to top up the broadleaf weeds, the easier ones, so um, uh, things like uh, black nightshade and fat hen, uh, then in that situation we can probably just go down the route of the Callisto mix. So Callisto plus Milagro will cover the easier weeds, should I say, the nightshade and the fat hen, which are very susceptible to mesotrion. What's the wind? Sorry, you've got a break there, so you can, you can cut it. Was there a break? Cut yeah. If the answer to the question is no, we're not after grass weeds, if we're just after meadowgrass, annual meadowgrass and broadleaf weeds, then that will take us down the route of straight Calaris. So straight Calaris is a litre to a litre and a half, depending on the weed size, will cover annual meadowgrass and broadleaf weeds. If we're fortunate enough not to have any meadowgrass, uh, so no grass weeds, and it's just broadleaf weeds we're after, particular uh, perennial broadleaf weeds such as docks that you may encounter, then this is taking us down the route for peaks, a prosulfuron 20 grams a hectare with a non-ionic surfactant. That will cover things like uh, docks, some of the easier broadleaf weeds, things like uh, charlock, volunteer rape, which are highly susceptible to, uh, to peak. We may want to broaden that spectrum uh, and we can do that in a number of ways. One of these is to uh, mix in bromoxynil. Uh, that will pull in things like black nightshade, uh, which peak doesn't control and extra control on polygnums. This is equivalent to mixing your own jester, which is the product we used to sell. And the final option there, uh, alternative option, uh, which is used quite widely on the continent, is to mix peak 
with uh, Callisto. Again, that will pull in things like Black Nightshade, uh, Bigger Fat Hen, etc., to broaden the spectrum uh, that we're after in a non grassweed situation. So that's the flow chart. Hopefully, it's reasonably self explanatory and can give direction onto the route you want to go.